Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric the Old Jarhead here. And today, well, we're gonna show you something that to hope it helps somebody out. I've done a lot of videos on power stations and how you can boost the power of a power station. And I've often talked about the different voltages of batteries that you can use, but I wanted to show you all three in this one video and what difference it makes. So we're gonna start with a 12 volt battery. I've got an XZNY 310 amp hour, 12.8 volt LiFePo4 battery. We're gonna plug that into my Opus Mega One power station here and see just how much power I can draw off of that battery to charge up this power station or really extend the life. And I wanna make a point here real quick, which is that I view these kind of options as an emergency type option. You've got a power outage, the power's gonna be down for several hours. You just wanna keep your fridge, your freezer running, that kind of stuff. How can you do that without buying proprietary batteries for your power stations? And one of the important things to understand and why I'm using this power station today is that each power station has a very specific requirement for its solar port inputs. Now we are using the solar input port. So let's go ahead, turn on this 12 volt battery and see what we get. All right, the first step is to turn on this switch, which is just sitting here free folks. <laughs> so, We've got 14 volts. We're gonna turn it on. You'll hear it click. There it goes. And now, if we look at the Opus, so we're topping out at around between 110 and 115 watts coming off of that battery through this port. Now that is because this power station can take up to 80 volts and it's a 48 volt battery in a power station. So it has to step the voltage up from the battery or if it were a solar panel from the solar panel and we're very near the bottom of the amount of voltage that we can send into that port. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and turn this off. All right, we're totally off. We're gonna unplug it from the power station and disconnect it from this one here. All right, let's get this battery out of the way. It's a heavy one. All right, the next one is a 25.6 volt XZNY battery. All right, there we go. Positive is hooked up. All right, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in here. There we go. All right, and turn this guy on. Now I would expect to see double the wattage coming in off of this battery than I had on the 12.8 volt LiFePo4 battery. We're doing pretty good. We're, we're at 300 there. So the 24 volt LiFePo4 battery is giving us up to 300 watts of charging. All right. Disconnect that guy, pull this off, and then we're gonna put it on a big battery. Put this one away. All right, here we go. Let's take this and set her down. Now this is XCNY's 48 volt golf cart battery. Now all of their batteries have things like low temperature protection, over current, over charge, all that good stuff. Let's take this and plug this in to the Opus. All right, here we go. All right, now before I turn this battery on, we're gonna add a battery monitor to it because when you buy one of these XENY 48 volt golf cart batteries, they actually come with a battery monitor as well. So you don't just get a battery, you get a battery monitor, but you also get a charger. It's a thousand watt charger for 48 volt batteries. Now this is a steel case. This is tough. It's got a couple handles on it on the top. It's well built, strong, strong battery. Now it tells you right on top, it is vibration resistant. It is IP67 waterproof structure. It is 2.0 thickened steel plate. So this is a steel plate. It's 51.2 volts. 58.4 volt charging, discharge rate of 2C, continuous current of 200 amps, peak current 400 amps for 60 seconds or 600 amps for 10 seconds. That is crazy amount of power. This also has a Bluetooth app, which I haven't tried to download yet, but I've got something else that I can hook up. And that is this guy, which is a smart battery monitor. All right, plug that in. On the side of this battery, there is an on-off switch. So we push that on. Okay, we've got everything hooked up and I wanted to show you this. So we're at 100% on page two. I just push the button here. It gives me some information, temperature, 
all that good stuff, how many cycles I've had, how many amp hours it is, 104, and if I hit page three, it actually gives me my cell voltage as well. Okay, so since we've got all of that, the next thing I'm gonna do, turn this guy on. So that gives me 55.2 volts. So hopefully you can see what we've got going on on the Opus here. I'll bring you down to it here to see if we can show it to you. So we're at 116, 124, 28, 30, it's going up fast. So it should start to draw more power. We're at 350 watts. It can go up to 13 amps. So 13 amps would be a lot of power, folks. It's max, this max is out at 800 watts. So it'll be interesting to see if we can get 800 watts out of this battery. We're at seven amps currently, pulling uh, 390 watts. So we're getting there. Here you can see I've got that 30 amp inline fuse. I've got my switch here. And then I've got the the readout here, we're up to almost nine amps. Look at that, nine amps. We're pulling 500 plus watts. The fans are really going now. Now, I think the most we got on the 25 volt battery was 300 watts or just a little over 300. Look at that, we're getting up there now, folks. 660. 5,120 watt hours. So that takes that Opus Mega One and sets it at uh, <laughs> over 6,000 watt hours or six kilowatts. So we should get about 685, there was 685. So 685 is the most I've seen so far. I'm gonna hook up a heater, plug that heater in, turn my AC power on, crank the heater up and see what it does. Still showing 12.55 amps. Oh, I saw 697, 700, that's on the input side. Look at that, folks. It is drawing more power because I'm using power. 700, 703, 706, 720. The important thing to realize here is that any setup like this is, in fact, what I would consider an emergency type situation. Yes, you could get this battery. This is a $2,000 battery, and this battery provides a lot of power, folks. Now, it's made for golf carts, but that doesn't mean that you can't use it for your off-grid cabin setup. Now, I like having the switch that I have here. I can put the switch and the fuse in the description below so that you could check those out. And of course, I'll have a link to this battery as well as the other two. But in conclusion, you can use a 12.8 volt battery. You're just not going to get as much charging off that battery as you will a 24. 5.6 volt or a 52.1 volt LiPo 4 battery. But that also depends on the power station. If your power station is set up for 12 to 24 volts, well then you have to use that 12 volt battery and maybe a step up converter to 24 volts. But if it's rated for say 40 volts, then you could use the 25.6 volt battery and you would be perfectly fine. However, if you've got one of these newer power stations that can take 60 or 80 volts of incoming power, then using a 48 volt LiPo 4 battery is gonna give you maximum charging off the battery, which is what you're gonna want in an outage situation where you're trying to keep your refrigerator, your freezer, whatever running. Could you run a television or anything else? Sure you could. Now, a lot of you have commented in previous videos that it would be better just to put an inverter on the battery and go that route. I'm not gonna disagree with that. But lots of people have these power stations and they just want to know, can I boost that power station and get more power out of it? Yes, you absolutely can. And I recommend as your number one option, the highest voltage battery that you can get to match your power station. In this case, 48 volts is going to give me 685 watts. I even saw it peak at 720. And I run refrigerators and freezers off of these power stations all the time. They're perfectly fine. It works great. So with a battery like this, giving me six or even 7,500 or 8,000 watt hours, depending on the power station I use, it's going to work great. Now I could use this on an all-way power station that I have that can take up to 60 volts. It would work fine. I can't use it on my AFRI power station because the max voltage on the AFRI is 40 volts. So I'd have to use the 25 volt battery on my AFRI and it worked great. On my Jackery, I can't use a 25 volt battery because it's limit is 24 volts. So I've got to use a 12 volt and step it up to 24. Then it works really well. But absolutely, if you're looking to extend the life of your power station to something greater than the thousand watt hours or 2000 watt hours you might have, 
then getting a big battery like this one could save your bacon in a major outage because you're really truly extending the power of that power station by this. And if you're only drawing four or 500 watts off the power station, then it's gonna draw it off of this battery and it could do that 500 watts for 10 hours before you started having to draw off your power station. And reality is, you're not gonna draw that. Refrigerators don't draw all the time. They cycle up periodically during that hour. And I've run a refrigerator for, for 33 hours on a 1500 watt hour power station. So it's actually possible that on something like this, I could get four days or five days worth of running on that refrigerator without any worry at all. That could make the difference of spoiled food or not during a three or four day outage. So check out XZNY. This is an awesome battery. So are the other two that I had up here earlier. Great company and thank you XZNY for sending the battery out so I could run this test and show you my audience how it all works. I would love to hear your thoughts on this folks. Drop them down in the comment. I answer every one I see. Meanwhile, I'll drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.